CID is, uh, is a fe Hindi English feature film from India and it is set in the world of college theatre and it probes fascism and fierce competition in the field of arts. Uh, there is this very fantastic and amazing theatre college, college inter-college theatre competition that happens in my city of Pune, uh, which is uh, to the students who participate in it, it's almost like life to them. Uh, it's, it's, it's as powerful as, I don't know, Oscars or BAFTAs to them. <coughs> And uh, what I wanted to probe and what I wanted to explore was while doing this theatre competition and while trying to win it, to what extent are we compromising our arts? And can arts really be put in the context of competition? Can you truly say that one vision is better than the other? It's very, very complex uh, when it comes to arts, you know. You have two poems and you have two paintings. How do you say one is better than the other? You know, because it's, it's, it's hard, because we have so many worldviews all over the world and, and many different worlds that we still don't know. Dear all, my name is Kranti Kanade. I'm a cool young filmmaker from India. Just joking. Internationally, I like uh, Mikhail Hanaka and Ken Loach, and of course, Abbas Kirostami, who recently passed away. But I don't think that he passed away. Uh, great thoughts and great minds and Shakespeare's and, and Goethe and, uh, you know, and uh, Hegel and, and Abbas Kirostami's and Woody Allen's and Bergman's. Who says they pass away? They don't pass away. They, they're with us with their films, you know. I would never write an obituary for them. It would be idiocy to say that he, he passed away, you know. I never met him, and so where is the question of he departing? His films are there with me forever, you know. Even today I see Satyajit Ray films and I'm so inspired. I feel as if he's sometimes, you know, sitting in my house and, you know, talking to me. And it's, yeah, I mean, I, you know, so I love, yeah, but I personally tremendously love and feel inspired by Mikhail Hanaka, uh, you know, uh, and uh, and uh, Ken Loach, you know, the, his his tremendous socialistic uh, left-wing cinema is very inspiring, because right now UK is so crazy and rotten. I just don't understand. You know, they are they just don't want any uh, left-wing thought in their own country, and why not? You know, it's just I don't get it. So these these fights that these filmmakers are giving are very inspiring. And then recently, in the last two years, the film that I like the most uh, from India is, of course, Court, which was, I think, uh, one of the, is a seminal film, you know. I wish I had made it. I studied in uh, this wonderful liberal arts college in, in Pune City, which is near Bombay, uh, where, I, I, where I did graduation in sociology and philosophy. Then I went to Film and Television Institute of India, that's FTII. That's the national premier school in Pune, again. And then I went to UCLA in, in Los Angeles uh, to do further masters in producing. And that was very, uh, very, very, uh, it, it really opened my mind a lot, you know. Uh, it really opened my eyes a lot and it was fantastic to study there. Uh, what a wonderful, what a wonderful place Los Angeles is, you know. Uh, it's very helpful. I, I, for the first time, I didn't feel the jealousy, you know, the, 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 the troubles of, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was very liberating. I myself studied in a very fantastic college called Ferguson College in Pune. And uh, when I was 16, uh, I, 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 when, I went, when I entered the college, I was 16, and I wanted to be part of this fantastic uh, uh, theatre competition, but uh, I couldn't. I couldn't be part of it, you know, because I think I was more interested, or rather I was more uh, suited for cinema uh, than theatre. So this dream of mine to be part of that theatre competition remained unfulfilled and incomplete. And then after 15 years, when I had the opportunity to make uh, 
Well, actually, I attended a workshop by a writer, and that writer asked us to write a, a voiceless moment from our life. And I think uh, as I slowly went back, I found that, yeah, that was that moment, you know, when I really wanted to be part of that, comp that theater world, and I couldn't. So I said, okay, you know, maybe there is a beginning of my film in that, and I could make a film on that. And then I contacted a very amazing and terrific young theater uh, writer called Dharmakirti Sumant in Pune. And I said uh, that, you know, I would love to make a film on this. So he came on board and we both started writing and it was amazing. Casting was a very fasc fascinating and important process. I think all over the world, many uh, young filmmakers underestimate casting, you know. They think that uh, um, probably the script and the technical aspects of, a, of uh, are far more important. And, it's, and then at the third point, they start casting, you know. And but I, I, I think that, you know, casting is, is paramount important, you know, even more than the script. Because great actors can make any story uh, believable. You throw any idiotic story at them. If they're amazing actors, if they're terrific, if they're involved, if they trust you and if you trust them, they can stitch together any kind of story, you know. And that story can have different kinds of, uh, different kinds of genres and narratives. And yet, those actors, just with their eyes and looks and, and just presence, you know, they can carry the whole film. Look at majority of 60s, 70s Hollywood films, you know. They're all actor-driven. They're all, you know, when Clint Eastwood appears in a Western spaghetti film, he just takes over, you know. You take him out and everything, the whole story is going to be stupid. So while casting CRD, we really wanted to work with the best new young talent, you know, who really had tremendous energy to put into the film. And we did extensive casting um, uh, uh, calls, you know, we did extensive research and we got some terrific support from our associate casting people, you know, um, a, a very uh, a great person uh, who, who works in and around theater, you know, called Sarang and another assistant of mine, Anusha, and of course, my, 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 my co-screenwriter, Dharmakirti Sumant, you know, they all three uh, found the best of the people for this film and it was fascinating you know to 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 find out that there is so much talent you know and there is so much raw like you know like like talent that is more fascinating than life itself you know and then i started discovering these human faces these eyes these people their hearts you know their their, their fingers their their shoulders their their chin you know their their eyes nose and I was fascinated. And then that's how we sort of, you know, casted this, these fascinating actors. And uh, yeah, and I think they, they, they took the film to a different level. I really wanted to shoot this film in a very realistic fashion. After having explored the, the, the amazing writer and, and actors, I really didn't, didn't have energy, you know, to to shoot this film with panache and with, you know, like some sort of, you know. And then our DOP, you know, Daniel uh, Katz from, from US, you know, joined us uh, uh, for preparation, you know. And then first three days, me and my writer just read out the whole story and the whole thought and the whole script to him. And then slowly he started understanding the, the elements of expressionism and impressionism, you know, in it. And it is he who slowly started suggesting that if we could go on this path, it would be very uh, interesting. And uh, I, I, I thought that if I have given my, uh, if I have given myself and my writers so much freedom, if I have given my actors so much freedom, if this whole process has been so organic and improvisational, why can't I give that freedom to my cinematographer? You know, I said, okay, let's do it. You know. So give me ideas, and in, over the next few days he gave me a lot of ideas. And I just loved it, you know. I loved his tremendous vigor, his, his, his energy, his 
his tremendous mad uh, involvement in every single shot. And I said, wow, that's what, that's what I want. That's what a director wants. Because filmmaking is like a relay competition, you know? The, you, yes, you're interviewing me because you think I'm the, I'm the master of this film. I'm not. I'm just one of the persons, you know? So it's a relay. And I need the same energy from my actors, then my DOP, then my editor, you know, then my sound designer. So I was lucky that, you know, when I was, my energy was s sort of, you know, just exhausting, my DOP picked it up, you know, he picked up the relay baton and he instilled the film with amazing visual energy. I always like to work with new collaborators and new people, you know, and uh, especially this film required a newer energy. And I was really breaking away from classical mold. So I wanted to work with somebody whom I had not worked with before. So Daniel's short film had recently won Oscar, uh, his short film Curfew. And I asked my uh, assist, uh, uh, assistant director to find out and contact him, you know. And basically I asked her to find out the best DOPs in the world, but of short films. <laughs> because we could afford them. <laughs> So, yeah, she contacted him, he, he came on board, and he was very excited, you know, to work in India. And he really embraced well, all, the, all the wonderful <clears throat> imperfections uh, that are actually a fuel for great works of uh, cinematic expressions, you know. So he was really, we used to lovingly call him uh, director of light. I was not too... I was not too uh, worried or keen, you know, about cinema scope because as a director, I was I'm, I'm, I was quite confident about my story and actors. So I just said uh, I really had very less preference uh, in terms of, you know, I I didn't want to impose too much on my DOP. So I said, "What do you feel?" And he said, "I would love to shoot it in cinema scope." So I said, "Okay, what? Do, why do I care? You know, <laughs> what do I care? Okay, shoot, have fun." <laughs> yeah, so that's how. So, but not a lot of people use cinemascope lenses anymore in India. You know, they use prime lenses, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> but we, yeah, so we had to find the cinemascope lenses down south. And he, we also used a diopter and, you know, certain, and we wanted the oldest possible lenses. So it really, because we wanted to that, have that film look instead of the video look, you know. We shot digital on red, but, but we used a lot of, uh, we used 40-year-old cinemascope lenses. So they are slightly soft. Because the digital sensor is too sharp, you know. And uh, so we wanted to have that little film feel. So how do you do that, you know? And then Daniel sort of, you know, put together this whole package. This is my director's cut. Yeah, yeah, every shot in this, uh, in this film, in this cut that you saw is mine and, and it's not sort of, you know, less or more. Well, in India, when we, will rele when we will release it, I think it needs an interval because it is such a powerful and intense film. People are going to be exhausted otherwise, you know. So sometimes when I, ha I see it, you know, here with audiences, I'm like, <sighs> okay, I need a break. So yeah, yeah, in India, we are used to having interval in the middle. So yeah, I think I will keep an interval in India. Of course, it won't be a big release, you know. It's not a, it's not a traditional commercial film. But I think it's also not an art house, it's also not a traditional art house film, you know. It's, it's after all a love story, you know. Told in the most, uh, most uh, secret way, you know what I mean? Because secretly the film is a love story between Chetan and Persis. So I think the audience is going to like it, and we will have a decent, uh, decent, uh, decently metro release, you know. Censorship. It's tough, you know. It's, it's tough. It's crazy. It's archaic. It's almost meaningless. It's almost like, you know, uh, trying to trying to hurt your own family member. It's almost like trying to beat your son, your father, your mother, your sister. Why would you do that? I mean, this art, we are making it for our own people. 
we are making this art not for, we are not outsiders we are part of our own country then why this law you know when when on internet because the whole censorship law is, is so archaic it's so meaningless because the irony is the internet the facebook which actually connects more people than ever has no censorship in india the supreme court uh, favored in free speech on facebook you know and on internet in india so that is free which anybody can access on mobile for free you know but film in which people voluntarily buy quite an expensive ticket mind you go to the cinema hall and see it how can you stop them how can you censor such an activity which is in fact done out of great decision on the part of the viewer so it just doesn't make sense to me you know and i don't uh, blame as much as the censor board itself as much as i blame as much as i blame the the law itself the law is there it's true and it is bizarre law so that law should be struck down you know and it is stupid to say that indian audiences are not mature enough to understand what is right and wrong for them it's like undermining the entire democratic process it's funny the indian people uh, have the right and the intelligence to vote an entire government and then the government says that no you're not mature enough to to decide which film to see so we are going to censor some bit for you does it make sense it's like you are interviewing me and then in your mind you are thinking that okay i'm going to throw this interview away then why are you interviewing me <laughs> i finally got the censor certificate which is a but which is fantastic i don't want kids to see this film it's exactly the same but i think at uh, at at two places there'll be a small blur on certain a certain part of the imagery everything is about winning winning is surviving whatever wins ultimately influences the world look at all the revolutions the group that succeed define the path of the society everything is about winning My name is Kranti Kanade. I'm a cool young filmmaker from India. Just joking. <laughs>